Make your major move. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves. What is up, everybody? I am Mr. Man, and I'm grateful to have you guys back on my show. Today is a flip the script, a 360, so I figured I'd come in a flip the script type of outfit today to make, to match what, I'm, what we're going to be talking about. I'm going to be going through my Twitter feed today, and I'm going to give you guys my mind, what I'm thinking when I hear these things as I'm watching these different, um, different meetings and different videos here. I want you guys to hear what, what I'm thinking and, and to further the Twitter tweets itself. That way you have more substance to it. It's not just the meat, it's the meat and the potatoes and the caramelized carrots and you have the steamed broccoli over there and you have the, the sauce to go on top, the gravy to go on top of that beef. So let me give you guys a bit more context here. And we're also going into the global stable coin today. Have I got a good one for you guys today? Okay. So it says the U.S. dollars backed by the full faith and strength of the U.S. government. What the hell does that mean? That to me means it's backed by nothing, nothing at all. Bitcoin will not be the U.S. dollar or reserve and same for ETH. And then my thoughts on this was CBDCs are tokenized deposits and will, and will be what backs stable coins. If you, haven't, if you haven't figured it out yet, stable coins are your sovereign US dollar, your USDC or VCAD or whatever they call the Canadian dollar, QCAD, VCAD, there's both of them that exist. There is the E Naira, the E Herivnia, the E SETI out in Africa, uh, the SAND dollar out in Bahamas, whatever the Jamaican dollar is. These are your stable coins, all right? Not CBDCs. CBDCs are central bank tokens, they are deposit tokens. That's all they are. And it is, it's essentially what's going to fuel or give a stable coin its value. Right now, the fiat dollar, tangible dollar, gives the, the gives it its, its, its value. But as money flows, so if you remember back in last year, when 2022, when the ECB, I believe it was, had converted their um, money into plastic polymer and they had... Um, security code on them, serial numbers on them, that's what it is. And then they drop the 20 pounds. So they're slowly decreasing their money uh, quantity or val deep values in terms of five pound, 10 pound, 20 pound, whatever they have out there. And now the new ones have that uh, the polymer and they have serial numbers on them. So as fiat money goes into the digital world or on board and through a bank, It'll now become that's that value, that CBDC, oh not CBDC, sorry, that tokenized version of this fiat dollar, okay? And that's from that's from a retail side of things. So that let's let's break down the anatomy. Once that once that fiat dollar comes in, it becomes a, a it becomes a stable coin essentially, because it's backed by that dollar, the one to one, right? based off of the treasuries and backing of whatever the currency is, the USDC, e uh, uh they have their own treasury, okay, um, with transparent, with third-party audits and proof of reserves. That's what the third-party audits are for. And then behind that, you have the CBDC, which is issued from the central bank. And the CBDC has value because it's a, it's a derivative. It has value because it's backed by commodities of sorts. Bonds, treasuries, uh, fiat dollar, uh, gold, silver, whatever. And I have proof of this. I have proof of this. So, we know the anatomy of a regular stable coin, right? The retail stable coin, USDC, USDT, USDT, I think is going to blow up. But then it's also a synthetic CBDC. What is a synthetic CBDC? A thin thin synthetic CBDC is a stable coin, a wholesale stable coin, all right? We're going to get into that after, but listen to this. Let me give you guys my thoughts. Turn to the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Rose. 
Thank you, Chairman Hill and, and Ranking Member Lynch for holding the hearing, and thank you to all of our witnesses for your time today. I'd like to also thank the Chairman for noticing Chairwoman Waters' stablecoin draft uh, to this hearing to give us the opportunity to discuss some of the bad policies that it includes. For instance, it would require each stablecoin issuer to disclose so-called diversity statistics, which have nothing to do with the financial stability of the issuer. Additionally, the Waters Draft proposes a push, uh, proposes to push forward with a study on a central bank digital currency, which has been called the single greatest assault to financial privacy since the creation of the Bank Secrecy Act. Uh, now, since time is limited, I want to dive directly into my questions. Mr. Morgan, the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency, <laughs> accepted all around the world because it is because it is backed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government. In that sense, it is the original utility token. I see the value in U.S.-based stablecoins to facilitate payments. So, Mr. Morgan, if we are going to use blockchain technology and crypto rails to facilitate payments, is it essential to have a less vol crypto rails, right? Just like out in Ukraine, where it's bit ink. You have the digital transformation. You have the Tascom Bank to issue the money uh, uh, along the Stellar Rails, which will then be USDC is what they're issuing out there in that war-torn country. All right? He's putting it together here for you guys. ...to asset like a US-backed stable coin than, say, Bitcoin or an Ethereum-based token. Congressman, thank you for the question. We think that that stable asset is a critical piece of facilitating real-world value. Uh, in particular, we believe tokenized deposits are one path to do that. Today, bank deposits are 73% of money in the U.S. economy. Uh, stable coins are separate and apart from that, uh, but we believe that competition from well-regulated parties uh, or the form of that money uh, can only benefit the economy. Thank you. Mr. Portella. Ver, 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 interesting. You can stop, my man. You can stop. So there, he was saying that the the U.S. dollars, the OG, uh, the old, the OG of stable coins, right? You heard him say that there. It's a token. It's a it's a deposit. It's a deposit. Is what it is. Okay, this here, this was all over the internet yesterday, and I, I want to say still going on today. I don't like touching on these trendy bullcrap thing but i'll bring it up just in case you guys care because i don't um but in case you guys care this, this is my thoughts on this still and this this says here uh to, to bring you up to speed the ledger issue where they are now allowing people to uh this is an upgrade 3.2.1 or something like that they're allowing um you to opt in to a subscription to have them KYC you, know your customer, know your customer KYC you, and you can also um, input your seed phrase and they can store your seed phrase essentially uh, between three different companies. From my understanding, uh, based off of what I heard from other uh, YouTubers, and I don't really know too much about that. Um, again, it's a subscription thing. It's an on. It's a. It's a know your customer thing. You can opt in or not at all. And my thinking behind that and behind that is based off of experience. Uh, last year, the government of Canada had removed stable coins from the exchanges, so you can't buy stable coins anymore. And reason being is for something like this. Listen to what he says here, and I'll break that down further. Okay. Crypt wallets, private wallets. Now, those who talk about crypt, uh, about uh, fiat currencies will say, hey, I've got a private wallet. You can't put, conveniently, a million dollars in this. Federal government doesn't regulate it, but how much money can you put in it? In contrast, um, we're going to have a stablecoin system that's like an iceberg. Some will be above the water and we'll see it, but then you'll have private wa wallets below the water that will contain will be a lot more efficient for tax evaders, drug dealers. Essentially hardware wallets, okay? And sanctions evaders. Um, I uh, uh, hardware wallets. So 
he, he wants this guy, Mr. Sherman, is saying that he doesn't want people to be able to hide their money, essentially. And money, again, sovereign currency, not cryptocurrency. They keep saying cryptocurrency is not money. It's not money. Sovereign currency, USDC, E-Naira, e, 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 e SETI, Bahama Dollar, those. Those. So if you're going to have that stored on your wallet, you will need to be KYC'd. seed. Your wallet will soon have a partition on it. I guarantee you that has a KYC option and an option for your crypto storage. Your crypto storage is not money. You do not need to KYC into that. So there will be a partition, right? A private ledger and a public ledger. You will have that as well, okay? And that's what I think is going on. But of course, to start these things, it always seems scary at first. And people are like, oh, no, we're going to... Oh, don't trust Ledger. Don't trust this. Don't trust that. Do your homework, right? Keep your keep your mind open and don't 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 allow yourself to be led by fear. Take a step back, take a breath, and then figure it out. All right, it's not always for the bad. Most times, it's not for the bad. Just don't let your emotions run away with you. Okay. This here, this here, retail has stable coins. So do the central banks, a wholesale stablecoin, better yet known as a GSC, a global stablecoin. Listen to this. Um, a Wells notice to Paxos uh, that alleged a stablecoin, uh, BUSD, uh, is a security. Uh, we all know one of the key prongs of the Howery test um, is that there be an expectation of profit. Um, could a purchaser of stablecoin have an expectation of profit? Uh, I mean, a, a user of a stable coin, it's hard to understand how they could have an expectation of profit. And so you would then agree that stable coins are not securities based on your, your answer, correct? Uh, correct. Thank you. I think that's, that's important for the record. Let me show So this individual here issues stable coins. He comes from the different aspects. He's a, I think he's a lawyer right now. He came from the SEC, FDIC, and a few other things before. I'm going off of memory here, so if I'm wrong, please don't. You said this, you said that. I'm just trying to go off of memory. This is from like earlier today sometime. Um, so if this, this individual here doesn't view it as that. So why does it matter? Because why does it matter? Well, who is in this court case right now? X Ripple is in the court case right now with XRP. With XRP. And if XRP is shown to not be a... Um, a security which it's not it's a commodity it's money it is legit money at that point it at that point can be viewed or called a global stablecoin and the reason they can't name or say the word global stablecoin yet and I'll show you this still is because they don't even know what a stablecoin is that you can't put a definition to it yet if they wrote a definition to it that means they have a name to it and they don't have a name to global stablecoin but ripple here says the global stablecoin race is on all right, so they use names and words to throw you off and all that fun jazz. Uh, where am I? This here. So I can see the narrative building for the SEC and CFTC to, to have members within Ripple. I don't know if you guys remember me posting this, but I said the CFTC and FTC will be posted up in Ripple in that company itself because they can't come to a conclusion. What is it? Is it this? Is it that? It's both. It's it's a hybrid stable coin, okay? It's hybrid. Don't let them screw you around. That's why you're going to have both these entities working in there. It's F CFTC and the SEC. Let me make my case here. Well, immediately cool. redeem a stable coin on a one-to-one -one basis. Please raise your hand if you agree. And stable coin issuers should be prohibited from lending, leveraging, or commingling customer funds. Please raise your hand if you agree. A federally licensed stable coin issuer should have a single federal regulator. Too many cooks in the kitchen creates regulatory confusion and duplication. If a stable coin is a currency regulated by the Federal Reserve, or a trust regulated by the OCC, it should not simultaneously be a security regulated by the SEC. Do you agree with that, Mr. Holm? I do. 
There's a common misconception to immediately redeem a stable coin on a one-to-one -one basis. All right. Now with that, what I had said, because they can't make up their minds on whether what the hell they want to call it, this is my thesis here, okay? Based off of regulations. I don't create my own shit up. I go based off of regulation and who adheres to regulation. And they show you who adheres to regulation because they put out their own. This is how we adhere to it. This is Ripple's adherence here. Fostering this type, let me show you, actually. Let me show you, where's that link? All right, I'll give you guys, we'll go back to this again. Here, it is from Ripple, right on Ripple's page, okay? A real approach to cryptocurrency regulations. Right up Irsa. Look, look. Fostering this type of open dialogue is precisely the aim uh, of the eliminate 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 barriers to innovation uh, to innovation act, uh, which was introduced on a bipartisan basis by House Financial Services Committee ranking member uh, Patrick McHenry, and Financial Technologies Task Force Chair Rep. Stephen, whatever. Okay, the bill which requires the establishment of a collaboration working group consisting of appointees from the SEC and the CFTC, as well as representatives from fintech companies, financial firms, and small businesses, passed the House and remains pending in the Senate. When do you think that's going to get pushed through? When they're ready to drop stable coins and they're ready to come out with the term global stable coin and when they can say global stable coin and say what is the, the 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 construct and the anatomy of the global stable coin and who oversees the global stable coin that's when that bill will get passed through okay once they have all that done all right all right let's go back let's go back let's go back so We've been talking about global stable coins here. So I asked myself, what is a global stable coin? And I heard the term synthetic stable coin is a stable coin. And I was like, what the heck? How is that how does that work? So I pulled it up. Is the la, la. Okay, let's do it right here. A synthetic stable coin really isn't that's even worse. Really isn't. A CBDC at all. Rather, synthetic CBDC uh, describes a stable coin with reserves backing its value held in a central bank master account. Remember the video from yesterday we were talking about master accounts. With the master accounts and the transparency coming to the Fed, other companies can now connect to that. But this isn't connecting to that. This is the money in that central bank's. The, Reserve, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Canada, the Bank of um, Brazil, the, uh, the National Bank of Ukraine, um, the, the Bank of Europe, the ECB, like all the central banks. Those deposits, right? Those deposits that they have there and the gold and silver you've heard all being bought throughout the past couple of years by all these central banks. What do you think they're doing? They are creating tokenized versions. And the tokenized versions of these assets here are the CBDCs. So the central banks, CBDCs, is what backs the global stablecoin. All right, I hope that makes sense. So we're going to go back to the, that afterwards, but look at this one here, okay? The Digital Pound Foundation speaks about Enbridge, and they suggest the concept may be deployed end of this year. Product. For those who don't know what Enbridge is yet, who are just joining this group here, uh, Enbridge is known as the multi-bridge, and on there you have an MCBDC, a multi-CBDC, which essentially, which is the synthetic CBDC. It uses an agnostic bridge currency. So you have the Bank of Canada here, and then you'd have the ECB over here, you'd have the HKMA, HKMA over here, PBOC, uh, the um, Bank of Saudi Arabia here, all these different banks in them. And they need to take this CBDC and move it to this CBDC. It's like a highway for wholesale CBDCs, wholesale, right? Recognize that wholesale CBDCs for this moving this multi-currency. And to go from one 
currency to the next currency you don't have to follow um you don't have to use different blockchains to go from this blockchain hop to this blockchain find a connector to get to this blockchain and then go up to here with xrp it just swaps immediately just swaps from this to this right but the yeah yeah okay so listen more business use cases more transaction types and more jurisdictions and broader participation um, our hope is that by the end of the year we'll be able to um, support a minimum viable product within a minimum viable ecosystem and that will lay kind of the foundation of the fully productionized platform to come so i see there's a bunch of questions in the chat but maybe i more business use cases more trend all right so we know end of the year sometime they this might this proof of this proof of concept might be unleashed on the world here so they can have cross-border payments wholesale cross-border payments that's what Embridge is about all right don't get me started here ripple launches cbdc platform for the development of cbdc's and stable coins all right i don't need to go into that one too depth into depth here this is what I want to get to. And this one here is important. All right. I'm not going to play it here. I'm going to play it right through Spotify. It says this you're not going to get anywhere else. I'm going to be the one to show you guys here. This only gives you a part of it because it's Twitter. You only get two minutes, 20 seconds. Let me give you on my YouTube channel now the full what I want you guys to hear. The anatomy of a G GSC, global stable coin, as stated by the central bankers, they're unable to make it. Um, because if they do, they will certainly need uh, a definition around it and how it specifically operates. That's why it's nameless, not supposed to be make it. They're unable to name it. Sorry. We know them as global stable coins. If they say that, that whatever this entity is as a global stable coin, well, you gave it a name now. Oh, you can define this. Oh, you know what it does, what it's supposed to do. It has its parameters. You've been named. So listen to this. They won't tell you what the name is because they don't want to have a definition for it. Listen to this. Uh, notes and bonds backing us, or treasury bills probably would be what was used. So you would have the treasury uh, monitoring the, the coding, uh, the OCC monitoring the actual issuer, and then the Fed holding the funds. And that's, to a certain extent, what Senator Toomey came up with, but he doesn't have the first tier of somebody monitoring to have a standardized stablecoin code. Uh, you know, they don't all have to run on Ether, they can run on something else. So that was my idea. Um, and it has historical precedent and it makes a lot of sense. Amazing, thank you very much. Um... We have a plan <laughs> that we can execute. So a stablecoin issuer would be a narrow bank, so a 100% um, backed stablecoin by a reserve a fund, I guess like a high quality liquid asset, yeah. for example, or a treasury bond. Um, and we have a regulation to as deep as code level. So the OCC or um, the experts at the Treasury would actually read the code and give a stamp and say this is valid, this is secure, this is at least as secure as a private bank, and this issuer can issue a stablecoin. Is this what we call a SCBDC, a synthetic CBDC, or it's not tokenized um, fiat money? Remember what we just learned about an SCBDC, a synthetic CBDC. They are stable coins. A spe special type of stable coin, a global stable coin. They just haven't named it yet. Listen still. Mm. How, 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 would you, how would you call this? Note, notice how hesitant he is. and he, to, to, He's thinking of, and being, being very cautious about what he says and how he says it too. Ah... Uh. I, I would call it kind of, it's, well, kind of a synthetic CBDC has different backing, or it's more uh, a direct uh, CBDC or, or electronic fiat backing, whereas, uh, let's call it 
like a, an authorized stablecoin or something like that. Um, I'm sure a, a more catchy name could be created. And there, in that case, the issuer could ha have any number of uh, securities or assets as the backing. Um, whatever um, Congress decided it would like. You know, mostly it's high quality treasuries, cash, um, and it could be allowed to bring in other other things. Um, probably Congress wouldn't like it, but you could maybe do foreign fiat would be acceptable, euros or something like that. Um, anything that has this, you know, ver that's very liquid and very uh, secure. So that's one difference, and it's really. And there's more competition because it's not just one synthetic, one company doing this uh, stablecoin synthetic CBDC for the government. It's this wide range. And of course, the different stablecoins do. XRP, XLM, XDC, Algorand, possibly HBAR. I don't know if HBAR is, but possibly. Right? Come on, man. Come on. Come on, this is what it is. Could have different functions. They don't all have to be payment stable points as to me. Right? Right. Labeled them, which was a nice touch. So there are some differences. It would allow for a certain amount of uh, competition and uh, business development, but keeping it well enough regulated that people could be confident in the stable coin that they're using, they can actually get their money back for it. They can really cash it in. Sure thing. Thank you very much. And you mentioned... Woo! That's it for that. I have one more thing to show you guys. He said you can cash it in, right? Um... Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to tell you where that came from. What the hell is that? This here. Okay. So what happens when you're blind in one eye from breathing too heavy. Let's touch the screen here because I can't see shit. Okay. This is the BIS. Okay. I'm going to show you guys here. Show you, show you, show you. I'll show you everything. It's all good, man. It's a good man. Okay, it's good. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, those are the group assets. We've gone through those. Is this it here? Let me clean up my eyes here and I'll make sure I get you guys the right stuff here. I'm going to put these regulations together for you guys here, right? This is what I do. Um, Here we go. Here we go, back to this again. The crypto asset is designed to be redeemable for a predefined amount of a reference asset or assets. For example, one USD is equal to one ounce of gold or cash equal to the current market value of the reference assets. Or, and example, USD value of one ounce of gold, whatever that is, whatever that is. The value of the reference assets to which one unit of the crypto crypto asset is designed to be redeemable is referred to as the peg value that's what they're talking about there and now they're talking about the stabilization mechanism the stabilization mechanism will be the, the would be the peg or the reference asset the gold the silver there and they said it can be many things right they said for foreign currencies it can be corn it can be tokenized deposits it can be tokenized anything 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 okay Guys, I want to thank you for spending time with me. I, I enjoy doing this. I honestly do. I enjoy doing this. I always say this at the end and not the beginning. I don't know why. But don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Please, please, please share this content. I am a 
I'm a solid YouTuber, you know, I'm not trying to push any, I'm, I'm not an influencer by any means. I'm a researcher, that's what I do. And I want to present this to the world, all right? I'm not trying to influence anybody to do anything. I just give you the facts. You decide how you want to invest and what you want to do with this information here and the knowledge that's helped you increase your knowledge span, all right? Until the next one, you guys. Make it major move. We going all in. Like we got nothing to lose. We making moves. We making major moves. We making moves.